My shift in spectatorship came very suddenly and specifically out of the influence of the women's movement. So that films that I'd loved, films that had moved me, I was suddenly watching with different eyes. Instead of being absorbed into the screen, into the story, into the mise-en-scene and the beauty of the cinema, I was irritated. And instead of being an absorbed spectator, a voyeuristic spectator, a male spectator, as it were, I suddenly found I'd become a woman spectator who watched the film f from a distance and critically rather than with those um, absorbed eyes. I was part of a group which has been very much discussed, a certain amount written about, called either the History Group or the Family Studies Group. Um, and that was where, among a number of other theoretical writers, we started to read Freud. And that had an, a, an immediate uh, influence. I mean, it was almost as though Freud could offer a vocabulary and a way of thinking about gender and sexuality that we had, that we needed, without necessarily agreeing with everything that he'd said, uh, we could find ways of articulating the questions and the issues that we were interested in. By the time I wrote Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, Hollywood cinema was very much the backdrop with which I could work. Um, it was as though Hollywood laid itself out like a beautiful backdrop, kind of almost inviting um, psychoanalytic and feminist um, critical analysis. The, the voyeurism, the place of the um, male star protagonist in fighting off being the object of the gaze and creating the energy of the story, the woman as spectacle, it was somehow all there in a way that other cinemas, it wasn't. We felt very strongly that Hollywood was finished. If you'd asked me at the time of the women's event in Edinburgh in 1972, I would have probably said that um, Hollywood would probably continue to make films, but it would no longer have the power or either cinematic or industrial that it had had before. And at that time, we were seeing such an amazing diversity of new cinemas emerging. The TUC is in favour of free state nursery care for any parent who wants it. But we're a long way from that. I was wondering whether... There are some nurseries in the textile industry. And the unions do negotiate about childcare there. But that's an industry that really depends on women's labour. Unless there's organised action around it, the union wouldn't have any reason to take it up. It's like most things. We have to do something first if we want the union to take it up. How can you make people see the connection between better wages and, and providing daycare? When we decided we would make a film, we didn't want to take a sudden leap away from the preoccupations of um, every day and the ideas that interested us and that we talked about. Um, rather, on the other hand, we wanted, as it were, to use the film to deepen, widen, explore those ideas and think about the way in which they could possibly be transferred onto the screen. We thought of our films as theory films. Uh, nowadays it might be called an essay film, but then we thought of them in terms of theory because that's the kind of work we thought we were doing in writing and it was a way of kind of extending our, our writing into a different medium. We were using what we thought of at the time as a negative aesthetic, return to zero, scorched earth, uh, standing back from the, so many of the conventions of cinema. The circular camera movement um, finished itself 
and once again excluded any questions of editing and put up point of view for question and also had a, a kind of elegant uh, resonance with femininity, the circular, um, the cyclical, um, claustrophobia, domestic space. Language and women's relationship to language was probably the central uh, idea running through the film. We were interested in discovering an avant-garde of the 1920s that wasn't the Soviet one and that was very different, had a very different um, relationship to its national culture. It was more like a record of the argument of the exhibition that we'd put on at the Whitechapel Gallery. Uh, and so the sense of having two women artists who were very different, but had both been working in Mexico around the same time with similar kinds of influences and political positions. So I think it was more to try and grasp the idea of the curation, of what the curating strategies were, not to make, as it were, an, a whole other kind of film. It was, it was almost like a document. Things have changed so much. Um, in the in the old avant-garde days, we would have felt that it was the responsibility of the director to both engage the spectator's interest and find a way of allowing the spectator to be an active spectator. So I think we would have felt that the onus was on the uh, aesthetic experimental strategy of the film to make a certain kind of spectatorship in the space of the cinema. Um, but now, of course, when people watch films in so many different ways, I feel it's turned upside down. And now the onus is on the spectator to be an active spectator and to engage imaginatively and poetically with any kind of film. Thank you.